A little while ago, Toonami announced that they were doing a new adaptation of Junji Ito's work, Uzumaki. Probably his most well-known and beloved story. It doesn't have the far-reaching meme potential of Gyo, but it is, it is visually probably more interesting and a little more terrifying than Gyo. And this announcement kind of threw the internet into a a, into a divisive stance, as most announcements do, because the trailer that they released with it, while having an incredible background music, the soundtrack to it, visually it looked almost like they were taking each panel from the manga and just animating certain parts of it. And when you adapt something, you have to make it your own. We've already seen from the largely reviled Junji Ito collection that was released a few years ago that taking a horror manga and translating it one to one doesn't work. I couldn't tell you why specifically this doesn't work, at least not as far as Junji Ito's work is concerned, because I need to get this out of the way now. I think Junji Ito is a bad writer, sometimes. I do enjoy some of his short stories, little horror things like his puppet house, but it's his long form stories like the previously mentioned Gyo and Uzumaki that cause me physical and mental discomfort to read. Not because of the horror in them, but because they seem so badly written. To me, Junji Ito is a man who takes a brilliant idea and a really well done setting and keeps writing until until the idea is destroyed. He he feels a need to keep escalating the situation. Everything has to constantly one-up itself, like, like the shonen horror series, and it enters the realm of absurdity, but it tries to pretend like it's still being horrifying, and for me that doesn't work. For other people, I understand if they enjoy it. It just doesn't work for me. So, upon seeing this announcement by Toonami, I felt an unusual pang because there's already an adaptation of Uzumaki. It's from Japan and it's live action and it's already solved all of the problems of the story. Let me explain. Uzumaki the manga is 19 chapters long with one bonus chapter, and is told almost as a slice-of-life horror story. It is a series of barely connected events that sometimes are tangentially related to spirals. The stories are varied in their quality, to me at least, I have to say. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I will go over some important ones. The obvious one is is probably the most famous one of a man who becomes obsessed with spirals. This is where it all begins, to the point that he's abusive to his family and eventually his obsession drives him to want to become a spiral, which he succeeds at. It's a, it's a wonderful introduction. Like, like most of Junji's work, it it sets itself up and follows through with its premise beautifully. And it even continues pretty well with the wife of this man being the focus of the second story and her fear of the spirals that killed her husband to the point that she shaves her head, disfigures her body, and eventually in her untreated insanity destroys her inner ear, throwing her into a state of permanent vertigo and ironically locking herself into the constant feeling of being in a spiral until she succumbs to her self-inflicted wounds and dies. Again, an amazing and beautiful story. This is followed up by a unique story about a student at a high school who is beautiful and every boy who sees her wants to be with her to the point that she's almost trained to deny and disregard all the men who hit on her. It's not until she meets the protagonist Kyrie's boyfriend Shuichi who wants nothing to do with her because he can sense 
the spiral in her that she becomes obsessed with the man who turned her down and this obsession turns this beauty mark a small scar on her forehead into this ever expanding and all consuming spiral that devours her over time it's probably the first story to really lose its connective thread like yes her scar becomes a spiral that drills into her and devours her and it's supposed to represent the destructive nature of her obsession, but it could have been about anything. The, the spiral was irrelevant here. But the story is well written, and you understand what it's trying to do. Unfortunately, for me at least, this is where the entire series begins to lose its horror. This is followed up by the story of Kyrie's father, who's kiln begins to produce these warp and spiral covered pots and vases as he has begun to use the mud from underneath the nearby lake to produce his pottery he becomes obsessed with sitting at his kiln and watching the pots morph and warp into this shape and it's revealed that the mud at the lake has taken the souls of the people who have died and is burning them in order to create this pottery. Eventually, this leads to his entire studio burning down, finally freeing the souls that were trapped in his kiln. But his obsession with the spiral pots continues, even as he can't create them anymore. I'm not going to go through this chapter by chapter. As I've mentioned, there's 19 of them, and it gets a little ridiculous. You can purchase the entire collection for $17 right now on Amazon if you so choose. And if not, there are of course other ways to find the story. But from here, the stories begin to range wildly in both quality and sensibilities, I suppose. We have a story about two people in love whose families keep them from meeting each other who coil together so that they can never be separated again and swim out to sea like a sea dragon this story is the one that first really hit me because it has nothing to do with a spiral he makes comments that his parents have been warped and that their hearts have been misshapen, but at no point does he insinuate or mention a spiral. If not for the coiling together that they perform by twisting their bodies, then this story would have nothing to do with spirals. It would have just been your standard Japanese horror story. This leads to the story of people who are turning into snails, which while I found ridiculous and again only tentatively connected to the spiral, it, it does set up an important story point for a later series. A girl whose hair becomes sentient and forms its own spirals in order to capture the attention of people around her and how the girl grows to crave that attention until it kills her. The amazing and fun story of a boy called Jack in the Box. That's not his name, it's what they call him. For his propensity to pop out and surprise people. It's It seems to be, to me at least, the only story that doesn't take itself seriously. It features a talking evil jack-in-the-box toy and a body that just bounces after people, eventually bouncing on a spring, giving truth to his name, Jack-in-the-box. From there we reach what is to me the nonsense and worst part of the story. The story becomes insane. A lighthouse suddenly begins blasting a light that if you look at it for too long makes you walk in circles. A group of mosquitoes attack pregnant women making them crave blood to feed their babies. The babies are born incredibly intelligent 
and by all accounts incredibly cute, but want to be put back into the womb. A hurricane hits the town and falls in love with the main character to the degree of trying to pull her into the eye of the storm. They are forced into a house that is dilapidated and ruined and causes these disgusting spiral spikes to grow onto their flesh. Some people learn how to ride the tornadoes that develop in the town due to being hit by six hurricanes, all of which are absorbed into the lake at the center of town. The houses that can survive in this town become so cramped and full that everyone fuses together into a tangled mess similar to a rat king. In an attempt to escape the town, they find that time Time is different the farther away you get from the center of town. And then, eventually, the story ends. Now, I glazed over a lot of it, and if you think that I'm being non-contextual or am exaggerating, parts of the story, I recommend to you to pause this video and go read it yourself and, and tell me that I don't understand the context because I don't. I would love for someone to explain the nonsense that develops in this story. But I read it. I read it because someone important to me loves this story. They love Junji Ito's stories, including this one and Kyo. But I made her a deal. I will read this story in exchange. You must watch the live action movie with me. Because the live action movie is about an hour and 25 minutes long. It has to be insane to try to fit this plot into it. And I had already known that the movie tries to be as faithful to the manga as it can be, which is why I was amazed to find that it's probably one of my favorite Japanese horror movies. The movie starts almost exactly like the manga, and I mean that panel for panel. It tries very hard to recreate the, the look and feel of the manga, to the point where you can do what I'm doing now and take out each panel and put it next to its own shot and see how much work they put in. The characters look pretty much how you would expect them to look from their manga counterparts. But almost immediately, the movie does something that interests me. It introduces the jack-in-the-box very early. The boy, not the evil toy. It introduces him so early, in fact, that I was almost caught off guard by it. I had expected, in a way, for this to be almost anthological, which it kind of is, but not really. I expected it to just escalate constantly, one event after the other, the way the story is written, but it doesn't. It, it does the best thing that it can, which is put all of these things together. The plot of the film focuses almost entirely on Kyrie and Shuichi as they deal with Shuichi's father's growing obsession with the spiral. He, he is taken to filming everything that is even moderately spiral shaped and just staring at it endlessly. You see throughout the film his growing obsession with it to the point where he starts stealing anything spiral related from around town. You get to see the insane movements of his body. In the manga, there's a moment where Shuichi describes his father getting upset because there are no more Uzumaki fish in his miso soup. But to resolve this problem, he takes his sticks and begins stirring the soup as quickly and violently as possible in order to create a spiral in the miso. And only upon seeing that can he eat his food? Kyrie laughs at this, of course, because it's foolish. It's dumb to think about. And in the manga, it's, it's difficult to picture from these still frames a man spinning water. But, but in motion, you can almost see where he's coming from. How awkward and off-putting it must be to watch your father angrily and violently stir this, this suit, spilling it everywhere. 
but it does still have that tinge of the ridiculous and Kyrie does still laugh at it. So he invites her over to see exactly how obsessed his father's become. And you see one of the more well-known panels of Uzumaki, where his father's eyes begin spinning in opposite directions, each one operating individually. And this is done via CG, and honestly not very good CG. But seeing it in motion really really sells the disturbing and awkward parts of this. Simultaneously, and this is the important part to me, simultaneously at school, several things have begun occurring. A boy who is very slow, physically, not mentally, is being bullied and harassed, being told that he is slower than a snail. A girl who accessorizes, demanding attention every time she enters a room, has begun developing curls in her hair. Jack in the Box is growing obsessed with making Kyrie his girlfriend, and a boy who seems desperate for attention has died performing acrobatics on a handrail and falling to his death. These are all chapters that I've mentioned in one way or another, and they are introduced very early on in the film, because as the father's obsession grows, as you see him losing himself in this spiral, the town loses itself with him. As opposed to being the longest years that any human being could ever experience, the whole town spirals into decay simultaneously, which is far more terrifying to me, because instead of watching these characters just ignore all of these things that are going on, they don't notice it until it's too late. A student doesn't turn into a snail, then a few weeks later, two more students fuse together and go to the sea. A big lighthouse doesn't suddenly start firing lights in a spiral pattern that forces people to walk in a circle. A few weeks after, two girls had a sentient hair battle in the front yard of a school. That's not what happens here, because that would be insane. It would be foolish for any human being, especially Kyrie specifically, to stay in this town when all of this keeps happening over months. She doesn't even try to leave until far later. The thing this movie does, the thing that, that makes me love it, is that it puts all of these things on a simultaneous timeline. Now, the movie does have mistakes. I don't want to make it sound like it doesn't. The CG is terrible, as it is very often with Japanese films. They don't have that need to seem realistic like American films do. They're very open about what is CG and what is not. And the ending to the manga did not exist when this movie was made, so it had to make its own ending, which can feel a little rushed, depending. But I'm getting ahead of myself. As with the manga, the father kills himself by becoming the spiral. But instead of being a absurd and ridiculous concept of him forcing himself into a box or a tub container, whatever you want to call it, to the point of destroying his bones but still being able to continue until he was all the way done. He puts himself into a washing machine in order to become the spiral, to see as the spiral sees as the washing machine goes, and that is what tangles him into this spiral and kills him. Jack in the Box, upon realizing that Kyrie will never love him and that they will never be together, decides that he will make sure that she never forgets him. He will surprise her one last time and throws himself in front of a moving car. A local police officer becomes fascinated with the spiral in the barrel of his gun, and Shuichi's mother again disfigures herself, shaving her head, cutting off her fingertips, and eventually learning of the spiral in the ear that will drive her to destroy herself. As Shuichi and Kyrie decide that the time has come, as all of these stories culminate, they try to leave. 
Kyrie wants to see her father, but he's gone. He was trying to collect mud from the nearby lake, and it claimed him. They have to leave, and they have to leave now, but it's not that easy. Not anymore. The spiral claims Shuichi, and he becomes a disgusting, stretched out, horrific being who demands that Kyrie join them in the spiral. And that's how it ends. We cut to a reporter who summarizes the rest of the stories. The boys who turned into snails and disappeared off into the wood and were never found. The girl whose hair grew into living spirals, attracting attention from everyone around her until it used so much of her energy to grow and flourish that it killed her, wrapping her around a nearby telephone pole. The officer, who eventually shot himself, staring into the spiral of his gun. All of these stories reach their ultimate end, except Kyrie's. Kyrie's story begins again from that exact opening scene. She will have to experience this again. It is a circle, a spiral of decay that she is trapped in. Now why, why do I like this film so much? Why do I think that it is the better adaptation? There are two reasons. One, I genuinely believe adaptations need to change. I don't believe that going panel for panel in any story will ever create meaningful film or animation. You have to fill in the white spaces between each panel if you want to truly tell their story. And while the movie tries to do that, it's honestly what it cuts out that made me love it. It removes the row house and the unusual disgusting spiral spikes that develop on people's flesh. It makes an allusion to them at the end. One of the images of the terrible things that have happened around town shows some hands with what looks like the spirals growing out of them, but it's not a pivotal story. The sentient hurricane that grows obsessed with Kyrie to the point of following her around and trying to watch her with the eye of the storm is removed completely. Again, there is a reference to the hurricane as it approaches the town, but you don't get to that part of the story. The part of Jack in the Box where his corpse reanimates and chases after them in leaps and bounds. Well, my favorite part of the original manga is ridiculous and removed. The part where they all develop essentially airbending powers and gangs learn to ride tornadoes and terrorize people with them is removed. Now, they do remove some interesting things too. Most noticeably, the Scar, the girl who is devoured by the spiral. They, they almost combine her story with Jack in the Boxes, a story of obsession, rejection, and eventually death. And I really think it's just that they didn't want to, or they were unable to physically recreate the spiral that consumes her. Shuichi also loses a lot of what I thought made him interesting. As as the manga progresses and more and more things happen to Kyrie, Shuichi constantly tells her that it's because of the spiral and that they should leave this town while they still can. She never believes him, not till it's far too late, which is insane to me. She, she witnesses so much death and suffering and never once believes that it could be related to the spiral, but he loses his mind far earlier in the film and eventually does succumb to the spiral, which he does not do in the manga. It also does cut out the most unrelated and idiotic part of the manga to me. The story of the group of mosquito women who drain the blood from people in the hospital to feed their babies. The super intelligent babies who long to be back in the womb. And the hospital that serves their ever regrowing umbilical cord to patients. It has nothing to do with spirals. It has nothing to do with anything. It's not even the event that makes Kyrie believe, even though she is almost a victim and in fact spends weeks with these women. I'm glad it cut it out. And that's what makes the film 
so interesting to me. It's what makes it the best adaptation that I can imagine. It cuts out the insane. Granted, not of its own volition. The ending didn't exist when the movie was made. They didn't know that they were eventually going to become this horrific monstrosity of people tangled together that would lead to an underground city. Oh my god, this is so stupid. They came up with the ending that they thought fit, and they cut out the stories that were unrelated and foolish, and they compacted everything into one quick timeline. Uzumaki went from being the story of years of insanity and destruction at the hands of this malevolent spiral to months, possibly weeks, of, of this growing insanity that eventually culminates in death and destruction for everyone simultaneously. The whole town falls apart and, no pun intended, spirals into decay and insanity with Shuichi's father and mother and eventually Shuichi himself. And then it begins again, a circular pattern. I cannot recommend watching the movie enough and I cannot recommend reading the manga beforehand enough. I think that both of them go hand in hand. And if you like one more than the other, if you think that the manga paces itself better or its visuals are more engaging, then to each their own, I suppose. I can't- I won't fault you for liking what you like. I would never insult you like that because at the end of the day, it's movies and manga. We're supposed to enjoy it. It's okay to enjoy things differently. I hope that if you've never heard of this story, that I have made you want to watch or read one or the other. And I know I was exceptionally negative about the manga, but its art really is interesting. And Junji Ito has a talent for pacing and controlling the page that he doesn't get enough credit for. It's why I love his short stories more than his long series. And the film does get a little ridiculous at times, but it's still a fun and, to me at least, genuinely disturbing watch. I hope you will give them a chance, and I hope that I led you to that point. Or maybe this film has convinced you to not give either of them a chance, in which case that's fine too. I'm going to do more videos, and maybe you'll like something else that I have to say. But if you've made it this far, if you're at the end, then thank you for coming with me on this ride. I hope to see you next time. Good night. We got place to go, things to do, people to see, and we gotta get it done right away.